I thought our guys did a great job at Vanderbilt uh, being ready to play. I think we've had a couple good practices here. Uh, it was an interesting trip back. We couldn't fly back because of fog, so we drove back. So it was a late night. It's a good thing we had uh, the Tuesday game because we had Wednesday off. So we got to give them a day off. And we, we had good practice Thursday, good practice this morning. And I think our guys are ready to go on a trip to Missouri. Yeah, too, if I can. Uh, first off, I mean, just now, uh, as a few more days have passed, um, where's like the team at mentally? How, how's the team doing? And uh, second question, uh, obviously, Missouri has been a tough place on the road. Um, what do you guys need to do differently that maybe in years past hasn't worked at well at Missouri? Uh, two good questions. The uh, Obviously, you know, we're still within the week of when it all happened, so everybody's still taking it day by day. Everyone processes things differently, you know, so, I mean, different guys are feeling different ways each day, but continuing to lean on the support of each other, seeing counselors, sports psychologists, you know, our, our thoughts and prayers. I read the guys' passage on Joseph this morning from, uh, from the Word, but, you know, our thoughts and prayers are still with Jamia, her family. I think of Kane, her five-year-old son. I, I was an educator that in Detroit for 11 years and had the opportunity to see some of that. I mean, they're going to have to have a village of people surround him and just praying for people to be able to step up and help raise Kane, but praying for Darius and his family as well. I mean, it's an awful situation for them to be in. So just different guys processing things differently and, diff, you know, Guys that were tighter to Darius, obviously, are taking some of it a little harder. But I think overall, the teams, it, it, you know, sometimes you use these instances to pull a group tighter together. I think our guys, they have to come tighter together because of the what they've been through. So that's that question. The Missouri deal, man, I this we've talked to our guys about playing at Missouri. It's for whatever reason. I think I think it's the only place we've played at. And haven't got a win since I've been here, if I correct, because we haven't played at Texas A&M yet since I've been here. I think Missouri and A&M are the only places we don't have a win. So we um, the year we went 16 and two, we went up there and just were flat. Um, last year with Charles not really having a matchup, we tried to zone. You know, didn't work very well for us. Uh, they, they they provide. Matchup problems this year again. I mean, they, you know, Kobe Brown's uh, an Alabama kid that, you know, is up at Missouri. Seems like he's always up for our game, and he's a mismatch problem. I mean, you put your five on him, he's shooting 41% from three on the year. Put smaller guys on him, he kind of bullies them. Like, you know, he, he's an issue. But, they, you know, offensively, they at one point this year, they were number one in the country in Ken Palm offensive efficiency. I think they're – they're still top ten if uh unless something changed last night, but they're uh they're a really good offensive team. You know, Coach Cates has done a good job modernizing their offense. They play faster, they you know, at least with tempo and things like that, they play similar to the way we play and spread the floor out, a lot of five out stuff, a lot of threes. So, you know, I this team's a lot different than the teams that lost up there. I obviously the, the really good team we had here two years ago lost up there too, but I just kind of like I tell our guys, you don't win games at home on the road. You know, I, there's been places. Apparently, Vanderbilt was a tough place to play here before, where we've gone in and got. We're just gonna have to change the narrative about Missouri. To be honest with you, we're gonna have to go out, play hard. First four minutes have to be really good. Our defense has to be great because they're so good offensively. On their side of the ball, they're they're number one in the country in steal percentage. We've had an issue with turnovers. Like, if we turn the ball over like we were doing earlier in the year, we're not going to give our defense a chance to even guard them. So on our offensive end, we really got to take care of the ball. If we can take care of the ball, we'll get quality shots. But that's been an issue for us in the past. I know you've already played in tough road environments at Houston and Arkansas, but with now being in the top five, top of the SEC standings, how are you kind of dealing with the growing target on your back, especially on the road with these sellout crowds that seem to keep happening? Yeah, I think I, I was talking with someone about that earlier this week. Like it went from we were going in, 
you know, beating Houston on the road. All we're celebrating. They were number one. You know, we celebrated hard after the Carolina win. They were number one. Now it's teams are going to celebrate really hard if they beat us. So it's it's changed a little bit from the beginning of the year. We're not that we're number one, but we're top five. So, you know, I I don't think it changes a whole lot what we do. Just know we're going to get everybody's best performance, and we can't afford to not be ready to play because everybody we play from here on out is going to be ready to play against us. You know, I'm sure we'll have a lot of sellouts, places we go. Fans are going to want to see their team play against top five team. They're going to be amped up trying to upset top five team. You know, different programs haven't beat a top five team and, you know, who know how long. So we just – we're going to get everybody's A game. But to me, that that's fine because – the goal is to be playing your best basketball come March. I think the reason we schedule our non-conference as tough as it is, we want to play against the best and we want to get better. If you're taking everybody's A game, you're going to make yourself better because you have to bring it every night. And if you don't, you get exposed. So, so different guys are going to have to step up. And we're looking forward to the challenge. Yeah, taking it back to Tuesday, you mentioned that you had to drive home instead of fly. You guys stopped at the Buckies in Athens. You know, was that was that whole late night kind of a team building thing? And you know, where did you see your guys grow after that win? Yeah. And listen, I told the team, I got on the uh, you know the microphone to talk over to bus and told them what the scenario was. And Brandon shot me a text from the back of the bus that I sleep sleep over at the Miller house. You know, he's from up there. I said all fifty of us. He said, yeah, be about as tight as it is on this bus, <laughs> but. We uh we got a second bus. The bus company's uh, uh, based out of Nashville and Huntsville both, so they, they got us a second bus in Huntsville. So the bus company said to meet them at Bucky's, and we took half the people so you could spread out a little bit more and sleep. But uh, I'm under the understanding Greg Burns, a big Bucky's fan, so I'm, I'm sure he was happy that uh, we did the bus change over at Bucky's. It's the first time I've been in one. It, a lot of stuff in there that you don't see. It, it ain't, it's not a normal gas station. <laughs> I mean, shoot, you can buy. It's like a grocery. Store. I, I don't know, restaurant slash grocery store slash convenience store. I don't. They had a lot of stuff in there. I I didn't buy too much of it. Or a lot of our players walked out with big bags of food, though. Coach, uh, during SC play, undefeated. But you know, do you worry at all about potentially a little dip in your guys? You have a lot of freshmen, young guys. Do you worry about that, or do you kind of lean into something like that? Because you said your best play has to be in March. Yeah, I mean, you're always worried about that a little bit because you can get complacent after. You know, I, I told our guys this morning if we split the conference play up into thirds, we're a third of the way through. Like, we've got twice as many games less left as what we played. A and M's five and zero, oh, Tennessee and Auburn are five and one. Like it's not like we're separated ourselves from the pack a whole lot. Like we've got people right on our tails with you know one team a half game behind, two others uh, just a game behind. So you know we're one bad game away from not being in first place anymore. So uh, we've got to stay motivated, stay diligent to the task at hand, and yeah, I mean. Freshman playing a little longer season, probably more wear and tear, more travel, more stress. So, yeah, we worry about it a little bit. I do think we've got some veteran guys that maybe haven't played their best basketball and should be fresh. I mean, Dom Welch has played a lot of games in college. He's still kind of getting into his groove from the injury. Uh, Namari, when he gets cleared to come back, will have had a month plus, month and a half off. Hopefully he'll be fresh, legs will be fresh. You know, so I think Quinterly, you know, hasn't been relied on for super heavy minutes yet, and I think he's got a lot more in there. Shoot, go back two years ago, he really turned it up about this time, started playing really well. So I think we've got some veteran guys. Noah Gurley's coming off the bench, hasn't had to play super heavy minutes all the time. You know, some games we need him to, but those, four, those are four guys off the bench that are veteran experienced guys that, understand how you have to play in January, February, March to be able to do anything. So hopefully, you know, our freshmen continue to play well, but we definitely have some experienced guys that we can put in there that they can give us some quality minutes as well. Hey, Coach, uh, some of the best players in this conference, obviously, are one-and-done guys that go straight to the NBA. But a guy like Kobe Brown, who's a senior, 
From what you've seen on tape from him, can you see that maturity and that level of experience when you watch him play? Yeah, he's really good. I mean, you can tell he's done a really good job. I wasn't here when he was coming out of high school, so I'm not taking any responsibility for not recruiting him. So maybe you can put that out there so he doesn't try to take it out on me. But I uh, I would have loved to have had him on this team. But he's – I mean, you can tell how good he is. He's – Shoots the three well, he's big, strong, he gets to the rim, he finishes. I mean, he's one of those mismatch guys. If you go five out, they play him at the five sometimes. It's really hard for fives to guard. You know, and he's gotten better every year. Like, he's shooting the ball a lot better now than he was when he came in. He's uh, There's not a whole lot of weaknesses. I mean, he doesn't have many holes in his game. You talk about, you know, he shoots free throws well, shoots threes well, gets to the rim and gets fouled, finishes at the rim well. You can play in the post. I mean, if you put a small guy on him, they're going to post him, and he's good in the post. He's good off the dribble against big guys. So I think, it, you know, they've had an unbelievable non-conference. I mean, we've had a few teams in our league, that, but they, they had some quality wins. I mean, the way they handled Illinois was pretty impressive. Illinois is a pretty good team. So, And he's, I think, from what I can tell, he's their leader. I mean, he's, you know, they've got – They've upgraded their talent significantly through the transfer portal, but he's – I mean, I, I think he's their best player. I mean, there's other guys that step up game to game, but consistently over the course of the season, he's been really good for them. Just with some of these road environments, just how do you prepare your players for the possibility that students might try to say some derogatory things given your team situation? Yeah, I, I've talked to our team about that too. I mean, basically I told them this, like, you know – if people want to be ignorant and say things that are completely out of line, and in this case, I would think, I mean, this isn't a case where, you know, somebody got in some light trouble. Or this, these are serious matters. I mean, there's a five-year-old cane that doesn't have a mother anymore. Like, this is not, to me, something that students should be joking about or – if somebody does happen to say something, I just told our guys, you got to be strong enough, tough enough. Like, we're here to play basketball. We know who we are, what we've done. We're not – if they're yelling things at us, they're completely out of line. Ignore them. Move on. You know, for those of you guys, and you'll be in the pros, uh, you know, they some fans say outrageous stuff to some of the professional athletes at times. But I, I, I hope it doesn't happen anywhere. I hope people have enough – decency to recognize the fact I mean I just I, we have talked to our guys though about just ignoring it let's focus on task at hand let's focus on what we can control I and mean, we you talk all year about control what you can control we really have no control over some fans if they say some ignorant stuff we have full control over our reaction to it we have full control over how hard we play in the game we have full control over the how we pull together. Let's just worry about stuff we can control and ignore all the other stuff. And we didn't have an ounce of it at Vanderbilt that I know of. I heard nothing about anybody, and I think so. Class act at Vandy, and I, you know, that stems from their leadership. You listen to Stackhouse quotes after the game. Thought he was as great as you could be. I've always had a ton of respect for Jerry. I, I thought his remarks after the game were incredible because he understands I mean, we've got two sides here. We've got the victim and we've also got in Darius's family there everything's turned upside down for them. He and he was a he's a part of our family so we're we're tore up too and you got both sides so it's not try to attack our guys like in that situation. You know, we're praying for Darius and his family as well. So I, I yeah, but we have addressed it with our guys and I just hope that different schools we go to, the leadership there's making sure that they've got that under control as well. Yeah, the social media, obviously, that's a little – at a game, you it, you have to say it with your face right there in person. On social media, all these people want to start a new account up, don't have to say what your name is. You can say whatever you want because nobody's going to find out who you are if you don't put your name on it. So, I just we, – we've told them that from day one. I mean, our, our guys have a bad game and people want to criticize them like – Nobody has any idea what we're going through in our shoes during during these instances. I mean, it's it's a hard situation to be in. The uh, 
if somebody gets on social media want to come at you like they're just they're showing how ignorant they are in my opinion two-part question here the bond motion that was filed for Darius yesterday said that he had no prior criminal history um were there any character concerns that popped up in your recruitment of him and secondly can you tell us what you can about what that character evaluation process entails for you generally yeah that's a good question look so we recruited Darius during COVID when you couldn't go visit him so it was all done you know, via Zooms and phone calls. And look, I, I love the kid. He's super easy to talk to. He still is. I mean, he's he's one of my favorite kids I've coached. So there, during the recruitment process, there was none. I mean, you get the typical, you know, he's so talented that sometimes, you know, maybe he takes plays off. That had nothing to do with his character off the floor at all. There was zero off the floor character issues when we recruited him. And to be honest with you, even when he was here, we had – no real issues with him off the floor. It was just, I mean, he's a likable kid that everybody liked. You know, the only issues we ever had were just trying to get him motivated, play a little harder in practice, you know, be more consistent, just basketball stuff, to be honest with you. So uh, nobody saw this coming. He comes from a, a really good family. I mean, his dad's retired military. His dad's got a great job back in D.C. He's a great guy. His mom's police officer in D.C. era, and she's a great woman. I, I just feel awful for both of them because this isn't really anything anybody ever anticipated Darius getting caught up in. So what what our general character evaluation for recruiting is now that it's, you know, not in COVID, we always like to see people in person, bring them here. You get a better feel for them, their family. When they come on a visit, you go see them in their house. But we'll call. I mean, I was a high school teacher and coach, so I, I – very familiar with the high school scene. Like, we'll call. You know, the coach usually doesn't want to say anything poorly about the kid, and we get that. So you get a somewhat honest eval from most coaches, but it's very they, – they, they want their kids to go to the highest level they can, if that makes sense. You get a little bit more honest when you start calling the teachers, the principals, the guidance counselors. You're in a school visiting a kid. We were in a school, me and Brian were a couple weeks ago in Ohio. We talked to the custodian, the night custodian. They had practice in the evening. That's the custodian that's around the team all the time when nobody else is around. You find a lot more out about kids doing some research like that. And so we, we try as hard as we can to do the most background we can to make sure we got high character kids. And I love our group. Like this year's group is unbelievable. Like I love them. And I'm just it's part of the whole shock of this thing, to be honest with you. Like, nobody – this isn't – I mean, I can't speak to the ongoing investigation because it's an ongoing investigation. It's just a tragic situation. But no, no, if we would have seen anything like this coming, we would have tried to do something. No, nobody saw anything like this coming, to be honest with you. Just with a few more days, have you seen the team respond? And now that you have a game under your belt, you're getting ready for another one. Is that kind of somewhat returned to normalcy as much as it is? Is it good for the guys? Yeah, I do think it's good. You know, I, they met with counselors. We had Wednesday off, I told you, a sports psychologist was here. Like, you know, I, I think in me talking to different people I've talked to as well, like we got to get them back into a disciplined day as normal as possible. Their their minds are obviously going to be with Jamia's family, Kane. They, they they feel bad for this whole situation. They're going to be with Darius and his family. We all are, the whole program. But as much sense of normalcy as we can get, go to class, you know, get your treatment, come into practice. It, like, we're trying to, while still keeping everything in prayer and talking about it when need be, we're still trying to make this as normal a situation as you possibly can. And to be honest with you, the two road trips back to back after the whole incident happened is not the worst thing to happen. We get on the road, spend some time together, healing together, talking through it. I think it's actually a good situation. So, yeah, we're the basketball side. Obviously, Sunday was as different a day as you can get, and that that, that schedule got changed up a little bit. After that, it's been as normal basketball wise. Typical off day Wednesday. Everything we normally do on a Thursday, we did. Got all the video done. Everything we do today before practice, after practice, everything is normal. Saturday, everything's as normal as we can be, basketball-wise, school-wise, all that stuff. Two 
Well, first of all, did you uh, buy any art on velvet at Bucky's? <laughs> what? Did I buy any what? <laughs> They've got an art section of velvet paintings. I thought maybe you would No, I didn't even up. make it over to that section. I didn't know that. Like, that <laughs> thing was so big. I, I, I walked in. Everything to the right looked like the food, and a little bit over here, you know, all the fresh food. I just – so apparently way over there to the left, they got an art section. I don't know where in that one, but <laughs> they've got No, it. I didn't know that. No, I didn't. No, I'm not going to buy my art from Bucky's, I don't think. <laughs> the other, what I really wanted to ask was uh, it's been a couple of weeks since we checked on Namari and just uh, any updates. Yeah, so he's uh, returned to practice in a limited role. He's um, been, able, been able to shoot on the side. He's gotten the um, cast uh, and brace off. He's had to have a heavy tape job. But, shoot, uh, we're going to see how he responds. Uh, I think Clark's talking to the surgeon that did the surgery. He's getting close. Uh, I would – what is that? It was December 10th, if I remember right, and I think we had the surgery that next week. So what are, what are we – today's the 20th? So what is that, 31 days? So what was that, four and a half weeks? And we said about six. Eh, it might be next week. At the end of next week, it would probably be five and a half, pushing six. So we're right, – look, he, he's, he's been in practice the last two days, and, and not, he hasn't been cleared to do everything in practice, but enough. So I, I think Clark's going to speak to uh, the uh, trainer, and, or I'm sorry, to the surgeon, and I think after these two practices, tell him where he's at. He'll probably have to get a uh, – Another X-ray, from what I understand, and see where everything's at. And he's, he's he's close. He's getting real close here in the next few games. And he, uh, obviously, Dom's not going to shoot eight percent from deep the whole year. <laughs> sure, hope not. <laughs> but how, I mean, how, it's, it's limited reps too. You know, I, how do you? First of all, what what do you think the this is beyond the behind the struggles of that? And then second, how do you get a guy through that with also playing the the best players on the floor? I mean, you. He's, only can be on the floor for a certain amount of time. Listen, it's a really good question. I think you kind of, in your question, answered some of why it's so hard. Like it's, you know, he's he's one of thirteen on the year, correct? Yeah, he's only got thirteen up. It's really hard to come in every game and go one for two. Like it's easy to go zero for two when you're getting eight. You know, if he was able to get eight attempts up a game, he wouldn't be shooting. 13% or 8%, I guess, one out of 13. He, like, so uh, part of these struggles, in my opinion, are he was out for a while. It takes you a little while to get back. When he came back, we're playing so well, it's hard to just focus on just getting him. You can't sacrifice wins and losses at the expense of getting one player back. Well, when you're in limited minutes and limited reps, it, it's hard as a shooter. I mean, when he was at St. Bonaventure and shot 40%, almost 40% from three his whole career, he was starting, playing heavy minutes. Could You know, if he had a game, he started 0 for 5, he can probably have three more shots in, in the game, three for eight, and he ends up all right. Well, we don't really have that luxury here right now with what we've got riding on the season. I mean, we've, you know, we've got a number one seed in the NCAA tournament. Like, like every, every game is really important. We're going to try as best we can to get him back. I thought he had two unbelievable days of practice. And, and I thought, you know, we chart the blue-collar points. I thought his blue-collar points uh, halfway through Thursday, yesterday's practice were the highest on the team. I thought he had a really good day. But I told the team, too, after, after practice, like, I thought this is the best Dom's practice since he's been back. But I also thought he kind of lost himself in a game, just played really hard. I think shooters, skilled guys, when you just lose yourself in playing in the game, and play really hard, like your instincts take over, and he's an instinctual player, and he made shots. So if we can just get him focused on that, just play hard, lock in on defense, you know, he's not going to be able to play the amount of minutes he did at Bonaventure. We've got a lottery pick wing player playing in front of him. Like Brandon's got minutes to play. You know, when Namari gets cleared to come back, he's got minutes. Jaden Bradley got put in the starting lap. He's playing great, which means Sears plays a little more off the ball. It's just we're deep. It's great this year that we're this deep, but it but it it hurts trying to get him back as quick as we need to. So we're going to try our best to do it because I really feel like he can help us on both sides of the ball. I think we need some veteran guys as we're making it through the season that can really play, and we need him to start making some shots. But I think his focus can't be on making shots. That always backfires. It's got to be on losing yourself in a game, playing hard on defense, doing all the 